Hello everyone, it's uh, great to be together via technology and I uh, want to thank uh, Mike Fisher for being here with us to uh, lay down some uh, video content so we can stay in touch. I just want to let you know as a congregation that uh, we have spiritual leaders in place and developing a phone list so that they can be in touch with you on a regular basis to uh, bring encouragement, uh, determine needs, if you have any that we can address during this time when we're separated and we're not exactly sure how things are going to go, but uh, I'm sure God's going to be with us. We're also uh, going to upload uh, this, this content on our YouTube channel so that you can access it. And I please uh, want you to please uh, visit our webpage on a regular basis because we'll have links and updates going on there for us to be able to stay in communication by the time that the church is not officially open. You know, the last, I've entitled uh, my thoughts uh, today, uh, Our God is with us. Our God is continually with us. You know, the last few weeks we've had a continuous barrage of negative news highlight headlines. And there, are, there seems to be almost hourly updates and uh, uh, keeping us informed of the rapid spread of this terrible uh, virus, the COVID-19. Infection numbers, and worse yet, uh, deaths seem to be on the uh, increase, even in Canada. Uh, we're not as hit at this point as heavily as other countries, but uh, uh, our health officials say our time is coming, so we need to be prepared for that. And this, this uh, virus has caused uh, massive financial anxiety and uh, intense social upheavals around the world. Panic is in the air. It appears that the world is gripped with fear and anxiety. And in the very uh, prophetic chapter in Luke, Luke 21, just one phrase seems very apropos at this, at this particular time in earth's history. Luke 21, verse 26, the phrase I wanted to highlight was, men's hearts will be failing them for fear. That seems to be prevalent in the world around us at this moment. But how should we as Seventh-day Adventists be dealing with the conditions we find ourselves in in the world today? Is there anything that we can count on in these tumultuous times? And I'm here to tell you there is one thing we can count on for sure, that God will be there with his people. You know, as I continue to be exposed to all the negative headlines and news reports, I've been encouraged by the promises I've been finding in God's word. I can't help but think of that beautiful passage found in Psalms 91. If you have your Bibles, I encourage you to turn uh, there with me to Psalms 91, and we're going to be reading a number of verses from this psalm. And uh, let's begin in verse 1, Psalms 91, verse 1. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night, nor by the arrow that flieth by day nor for the pestilences that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth, wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. The promise is sure. God will deliver us from the pest, noisome pestilence, we do not need to be afraid of the pestilence that walketh in the darkness. Thousands will fall on either side, but it will not come near us. Let's take a look at the next few verses in verses 9 and 10 of this same chapter, Psalms 91. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the Most High, thy habitation. 
There shall be no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. Promises like this should give us comfort and hope. But they are also a bit problematic. After all, as you well know, even Christians will contact this virus and get sick and battle with other health conditions. They don't always escape these diseases or infections. In my experience, there doesn't seem to be uh, a promise of absolute immunity. As long as we live in this world of sin, bad things will happen to good people. Then what do these verses actually mean? Allow me to suggest a few uh, concepts. Number one, don't be afraid. First and foremost, the believer really has no reason to fear. God is our refuge and fortress. Our trust is in Him, and we are under His protection. Some have suggested that these promises point only to the resurrection. That if disease does take our life here, we can be confident that God will raise us up. And ultimately, we do have that assurance. To quote Paul, he said, Death, where is thy sting? But I think there is more going on in these verses. So number one, don't be afraid. Number two, God protects. For one thing, it seems clear these verses describe God actively protecting his people. They seem to show him willing and able to intervene and keep infection from us. It will not come near us. We will not fall like others. We really can be secure under his wings. Which implies if God does allow us to become sick, there must be a reason for it. Or to put it differently, nothing can touch us except by God's permission. Otherwise, we really are perfectly safe in the hands of God. And we can trust him that anything he allows through, uh, ultimately, uh, to touch us will be for our good. Except by his permission, we literally are indestructible. Third thing, concept I'd like to put forward, is there are conditions. Perhaps most significant, this passage gives clear condition for his protection. These promises are for those who dwell in the secret place of the Most High, who abide under His shadow. Clearly, this is talking about an experience of intimate communion, a relationship of real communication and interaction. Those who are spending time in earnest fellowship with God, in His presence, seeking direction and counsel, are the ones who will be protected. You know, and as circumstances uh, develop and we need to be staying at home or uh, admonished to stay at home, that's going to give us time. And let's use that time productively to uh, deepen our relationships with our families, our spouses, and especially with our God. You know, verse 4 in Psalm 91 says, His truth will be our shield and buckler. That is, God will give us the information and instructions we need to make good decisions, and those decisions will help protect us. If we are not getting direct communication for God, from God, or worse, not following His instructions, we are tossing away the shield and buckler God gives to keep us safe. But if we pray, seek His guidance at every point, about what steps to take or not take, and follow his leading carefully, we are complying with his conditions and can claim his protection. You know, it's interesting that the very next verses in this passage were actually quoted by the enemy when tempting Jesus in the wilderness. You remember the situation. Jesus was taken to the top of the temple and urged to throw himself off of this uh, uh, precipice. And uh, he quoted this in verses 11 and 12 of Psalms 91. "For For he shall give his angels charge over thee 
to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. That's how that passage reads. Satan left off a very important part of the verse, of course. The part about keeping us in all thy ways. But Jesus understood this promise was for those who committed their ways to God and followed his instructions explicitly. God's protection was not promised to those who stepped out of God's will by doing something as crazy as jumping off a building. To claim a promise without fulfilling the conditions is called presumption. Jesus immediately recognized the trap and rebuked the devil. All the promises in this chapter are similar. If we stay connected to God, abide in Him, listen for His still small voice in our secret times with God, we will have His presence and His protection. There is nothing to fear. God is in control. Nothing can touch us except at His will and for our ultimate good. But to neglect that fellowship, to not seek His counsel, or worse, to not follow it, puts us in a more dangerous situation. We risk falling into the exact same trap of the enemy, claiming God's promise of protection when we haven't fulfilled the conditions, when we haven't done our part. To ignore his instruction and then still expect his blessing is presumption. This principle reminds me of another related verse found in Exodus 15, verse 26. And said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and wilt give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that heal thee. Notice the clear cause and effect relationship. If we hearken diligently, do what God tells us, value his commandments, keep his statutes, then we will be protected from the many diseases of the Egyptians. God will be our healer. Notice further that this is particularly an all or nothing kind of verse. Our part is to keep all of his statutes. His part is to put none of those diseases upon us. It doesn't say keeping most of his statutes will leave us susceptible to just a few diseases. No, it's keep them all and your protection will be sure and complete. Which leads me to the final part of uh, my presentation today, and that's focusing on our health. Our health message is now more important than ever. The whole health message. To really dwell in the secret place, to enjoy the secret counsel of the Lord, is to abide under His protection. To hearken diligently to his voice and keep all his statutes is to be protected from the diseases of this world. We as SDA Christians have had the blessing of positive insights into how we can maximize our health. If there was ever a time that we need to be actively embracing these health principles, it would be now. New START is the acronym that summarizes the eight health principles that I encourage everyone listening to this presentation to put into practice in their personal lives in order to live an abundant and healthy lifestyle. This will give you the best defense against the virus if you come in contact with the virus and it will give your body the best chance of combating it. I just want to touch base on each one of these aspects briefly and how it relates to the virus. N for his nutrition of the New START acronym. A good plant-based diet that's low in sugar and refined foods, as close to the Genesis model as possible, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, nuts, berries, etc. What we eat has a huge impact on our immune system. Try to avoid anything with a high sugar content since this impairs the function of our immune system. 
E stands for exercise in the acronym. A good cardio work, workout, or if you can't do that, at least a brisk walk, at least two to three times a week can get the blood circulating all through the body, strengthen our heart and lungs, and all this stimulate the immune system as well. Water. Drinking lots of clean, pure water is another great way to flush toxins and impurities out of our body and bolster our immune system's ability to fight invaders. Get rid of your teas, coffee, and sodas. Those can only harm with their high sugar and uh, cafe caffeine, caffeine contents. Next is sunlight. Not only is sunlight a powerful antiviral, but it creates vitamin D in our bodies, which is an integral part of our immune system. Next is T for temperance. Abstaining from anything harmful to our body that break down, down its natural defenses and even good things need to be used in moderation. You know, I was sorry to see in the news report last night that people are lining up uh, at the alcohol store and the cannabis store to make sure they have their supply if it's, these stores are shut down in the next couple of weeks. They'd be best shutting those stores down right away. But uh, we need to keep that in mind. Only uh, nothing that's harmful in our bodies. Air is the next part of the acronym. Take a brisk walk outside during the day and keeping a window cracked where you sleep are more great investments in your overall health. R is for rest. Want another way to keep your immune system robust? Make sure you're getting eight to nine hours of good quality rest each night. It is vital. And then T, very important. Trust. Don't let this anxiety and stress overwhelm you. It is a killer and can greatly compromise your ability to fight infection. The antidote, put your trust in God. And you probably know this text, you can probably quote it with me, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He shall direct your path. In other words, following God's counsel for healthy living will strengthen us to face any health crisis. His truth indeed becomes a shield and buckler for us. But living stress-filled lives without enough sleep, little sunshine, little fresh air or exercise, and eating junk food and soda pop, even, even if it is vegetarian, well, that can be a recipe for disaster. Another very good way to increase our circulation and immune system is to employ hydrotherapy. Hot and cold treatments when you shower can have a dramatic positive effect on your circulation and immune system. I've done this in the past and I actually put it into practice this morning. The hot and cold in the shower, wow, you could hear me hooting and hollering when I uh, changed it over the cold, but uh, I'm telling you, after I did that a couple of times, you just feel invigorated. Your skin's tingling and you know it's having a positive effect on your circulation and immune system. You know, there's much, much more, of course. The Bible is full of instructions about proper sanitation, hygiene, and cleanliness. And one of the key ways to prevent the spread of infection is to frequently uh, wash your hands and use hand sanitizer, if you can find it. I noticed again on the news that there was a, uh, a company, I think, that, was produced, that used to produce wine, but during this time they're going to produce... Uh, uh, bottles of hand sanitizer that they're making it available for the public. I wish I had a link for you. I don't. And uh, you know the Bible, the Bible was the first, gave the first concept to the children of Israel to mitigate against disease in them in the wilderness by using the strict quarantine laws. And uh, you know it may come to that in this country to get ahead of this virus that we need to stay uh, in our homes and self-isolate or quarantine ourselves to uh, strike this uh, a blow to this virus. And I encourage you to keep up with all of the admonitions by our healthcare professionals and abide by them. To wrap up, allow me to summarize. First, COVID-19 is a potentially serious threat and we have good reason to be concerned. Things may st stabilize 
or they may spiral out of control. It's difficult to know, but the risk is real. And we as Christians need to do everything we can to stem the tide to protect those that are vulnerable uh, in, our, uh, in our population that could contact this and, and uh, meet their demise as a result of this terrible virus. I want you to realize, with all this going around us, that we have nothing to fear. If we dwell in the secret place of the Most High, we can count on His protection. His promise is trustworthy and sure. Nothing can touch us but by His permission and for our ultimate good. But if we do not comply with God's conditions to listen carefully to His secret counsel and obey fully all His teachings, particularly His teachings about health, His truth can be a shield and buckler but only if we practice them. The last text I'd like to share with you is found in Isaiah 41.10. And it's a beautiful text. It says, Fear not, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. What a wonderful promise one of so many that we find in his word. Take the extra time you may find uh, you have on your hands and make sure you have a vibrant devotional experience with you and your family. And we can take this promise. We don't need to fear. We don't need to be dismayed. Our God will strengthen us, help us, and uphold us. Amen? May God be with each one of you, your families, and with our country at this time. I invite you to bow your heads with me as we close in prayer. Father in heaven, we're anxious. Many of us are fearful. But Lord, we depend on you that you will fulfill your promises found in your word. Help us to meet those conditions you've laid out. Help us to be faithful to you so that you can be faithful to us and bless us in the coming weeks and time uh, that this virus is plaguing our country and our world. Lord, I, I lift up our health care professionals. May uh, they take the precautions and be protected by you from get, getting the virus so they can minister to those who have fallen ill in our midst. Bless them, sustain them, strengthen them, and be with each member and our, our, our population in Canada. May we heed the admonitions from our healthcare professionals to get ahead of this curve and to mitigate against its, the spread of this virus so that we can be protected and the vulnerable in our, in our uh, uh, populations can be protected as well. Thank you for being here with us. Thank you for answering this prayer. Go with each one of us. Protect our families, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.